This little project is going to cover quite a lot of different features in Bryce. I don't think it's going to take very long to set up, but it will take a while to render. It's only going to incorporate two things. We've got the infinite plane, which is currently in the default grey, and I'm going to bring in a model. It's come from the uh, Stanford Scanning Repository. I think uh, Horo converted it for me using MeshLab, and I'll bring in I'll bring in this uh, high resolution version because I don't think I'm going to be scraping for space on this file. So there's the uh, the dragon. I'm going to rotate him round a bit, so he's he's uh, facing the camera. I'll lift the camera up, point it down, bring it a bit closer and narrow the field of view. Well, bearing in mind field of view is affected by the document aspect ratio. I'm going to go to document setup and change to a one to one and I'll do it at 700 by 700. Uh, we are going to be using premium effects and we will be needing to employ a high raise per pixel for the effect I'm looking for here so it will be a somewhat long render. We'll see how it turns out anyway. So I'm just going to set this camera view up so I'm losing sight of the horizon and then we'll start modifying things seriously. So there we go, we've got well, probably a little bit too high there. I'll just tilt that back, sort him out. Right, there we go. As our scene setup, I'll just save this camera position. I don't think I'm going to be modifying it again, so that's saved that camera position. Right, uh, lighting wise, let's see. Sky and fog. I'm going to go into the Skylab. I'm going to use image based lighting, use HDRI image, open that image load in this garage closed image. I'm not going to use any output from it and I'm going to turn the quality down and we'll sit render in C so you can't see anything. The sunlight's been automatically disabled by that and I'm going to just for the time being unclick uh, user's backdrop but I'm going to set the intensity up. This is the intensity I intend to have for the final rendered image. I'm just turning it off for now so it's not going to influence the appearance of our scene but I will be turning it on later on and it, it will be add to sky so just get that ready to use and I'm going to set the atmosphere off and set the sky to fully black and so now when I render you can just see there's a bit of ambience in this material for the dragon. I'm going to create three light sources. So I create a light source and I'm going to lift it up somewhere above the dragon. I'll lower it down a bit there. See how that looks. Okay, that's one light source off to the right and behind. I'll copy and paste that and put that here as well. So I've got another light source. And uh, I'm copy and paste it again. So I've got three light sources. So that's now lighting my dragon up a bit. Uh, the shadows, you see how hard the edges are that's given the uh, game way with the light source. So if I select all of the radio lights and edit them and then I'll increase the shadow softness to 100% that will soften my shadows but you can see now the renders taking quite a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to render options, premium effects and select soft shadows. I'm going to lower the raise for pixel to for previewing so that should just speed things up for me and give that a quick render. You can see now the soft shadows look more grainy but they also spread out a bit more that's because the premium effect render engine is in fact different from the one in the first three options. So that's sorted my shadow edges out but I want this uh, to look a bit brighter so I'm going to modify the ground plane modify the ground plane material. I'm going to set it to fully white, so hold the Alt key down while clicking on the colour swatch to get that uh, little menu. I'm going to give it some specularity. I'm going to increase the specular halo value up so it's close to uh, nearly full value. So I've got a wide specular halo spot. I'll check out of there. If you're wondering why the menus are hanging around for me, that's because of uh, Camtasia Studio. So this bright white area is resulting from the uh, specular halo. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to modify radial light colours. So I'm going to create um, a bluish coloured light here. And this one, I think I'm going to make this one orange. So I'll just modify the light colour here so it's in the orange spectrum. I like the HLS option for modifying these. And okay, it's just a case of holding the Alt key down. So I've introduced some coloured lighting now. And the next thing I'm going to do is modify the dragon. So I select my dragon, go into the material lab, and I'm going to set the diffusion to fully white. 
we'll set it down and I'm gonna I'm gonna have ambience which may seem like a strange choice but I'm not going to introduce it just yet I'm gonna set this refraction value up so it says glass somewhere about there one five three I think it is yep there we go glass make it fully transparent and set the volume material to be a blue tint there and the specular halo value here well about you know this sort of area I was thinking of anyway and the reason for that is this, this menu is hanging around because of the Camtasia so I try to ignore that as I'm going to use premium effects and blurry transmissions so that we get a nice um, almost subsurface scattering within the glass and while I'm at it I'm going to set the depth of field and since the dragon's currently selected and we're looking through the camera view I can set current selection and that will give me some depth of field effect I'll widen the aperture a bit to enhance the effect and we'll just give that a quick preview so now that the the light the transmission through the dragon is getting scattered because of using uh, the blurred transmission effect and you can see his nose is a bit out of focus so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a target so we can get his head more in focus and let his tail go out of focus so I'll just go to the overhead view create a sphere just that's an ordinary sphere go to the attributes and hide that sphere then I'll just zoom in a bit so I can control where I place it so here's his head I just need to lift it up so it's inside his head but it won't be rendered because of uh, as of turning it to hidden and now if I go back to the render options here and go set to current selection that will target on the sphere because the sphere is selected and that will put the head in focus and hopefully this has just gone slightly out of focus just to give us a better effect of, uh, of depth now I said I was going to use ambient on this uh, glass material so if I go back into the material lab for this dragon and give ambience but give it an ambient color that's a sort of an intense blue shade now that will add a bit to the effect of the glass but we need to control it quite carefully with the global ambient otherwise it's going to end up looking too bright uh, as you can see from the preview here very bright so in sky and fog and alt key on this control and we'll turn this down to around about 20 so that'll just end up multiplying the lightness inside the glass and give it a bit of an effect of glowing like there's uh, light trapped inside it and the final thing is I'm not using blurred reflection so when I turn my HDRI backdrop on this should start picking up the reflections I'm just checking whether the dragon is sat on the ground because it does happen that when you bring these things in you can see I've got quite a high intensity for the uh, mesh resolution here on the preview mode you can see that it was floating slightly above the ground because the bounding box for mesh objects tends to be larger than the object so right, I'll switch back to my camera view now well, camera view give me camera view where are you camera view thank you and I'm going to modify the ground plane um, material and I'm going to include ambience in that and that in turn is going to be a blue tint so I'll just give that an intense blue tint just to see that it's not going fully black at, at the back there so I don't usually use a lot of ambience in my effects but in this case uh, they're just sort of adding something to the scene and the final thing is remember I loaded in this HDRI backdrop but it's not providing any light source it's just going to provide a good ref source for reflections and it's going to add us some highlights so I've got add to sky selected users backdrop and and now you can see with this intensity value here is determining how bright it appears and that should give us some good highlights on this glass material which is now looking like it's really glowing quite intensely if, if that's the case if it's if it's gone over the top then uh, you can always lower the ambient effect down a bit let's see what we want I'll try I'll try to get about 10 let's just take uh, take a bit of the glow out but I still want it to be fairly bright uh, I might in fact I might offset that at the, go the other way turn that up but select the material for this it's, it takes a little while because I've chosen the high resolution mesh and increase the volume so this is going to result in hopefully in a bit more absorption for the for the colour there so that will be sort of offset in the ambient effect that's gone rather now rich colour maybe I don't want it so saturated so go back into the material lab here 
there's always these last little bits that seem to take the longest. So I'll take the saturation down and lower the intensity again. Did I check that? Hopefully so. Let's see if it's changed it. Yep, that's looking about right now. You can see even with four rays per pixel, it's taking five minutes. So the final render is going to take a while. So we'll set that up now and I'll pause the video and you can have a look when it's done and hopefully it'll look really good. So 256 rays per pixel and that's many doubling. So we've got a double, 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 this double. So I don't know, it's going to be about an hour or something. Let's see. You'll see that it slows down quite considerably where it's going through the transparency because there's reflections, there's a lot of interreflections. The other thing to consider is do we want to turn on um, total internal reflection? That does tend to help things appear more glassy and it might also have an impact on the render time, which as you can see already is going to be quite slow. So uh, I'll just pause the video here. We'll just see what this predicts the render time is going to be. Okay, so that's saying six and a half hours, which is quite a lot longer than I expected. I suppose I did my calculations right. And the other thing is the more complicated the model you use, the longer it's going to take, I think. So let's go into render options here and see if we can do some time savings. We'll try, hello, oh thank you Windows, total internal reflection. I'll check that. We'll lower the maximum ray depth, which means it in doesn't investigate as far, and I'll lower the rays per pixel to 64, which sort of borderline for this effect but we'll see how it goes. You can see it's going to be a lot faster and uh, obviously this, these darker areas because the rays have not been able to travel as far or they've been caught by a total internal reflection. So that's uh, coming out at 35 minutes so I'll pause the video here, we'll give that a whirl and we'll see how it looks. So there's the completed render. I don't think it turned out too badly. I think I did overcook the uh, depth of field effect a little bit there, it's a bit too soft and it could probably have done with more rays per pixel, there's a bit of grain in evidence down at this bottom corner here and on his leg but overall I think it turned out alright. Now you may not have uh, realised what effect applying this little bit of ambient, and remember it was only a little bit to this material and if we just go into the material here this is offsetting the absorption from using the volume colour if you experiment with this then you will you know you can in your own time by not using this effect you'll see that it does add quite a lot of realism to the total effect of the glass material and it's sort of there to make up for the fact that uh, Bryce doesn't really handle subsurface scattering or intermaterial scattering as well as it could do though obviously this is not uh, the most challenging situation because it's not like a waxy material or skin but it, it's getting close to the limitation of what you can achieve in terms of realism in the material qualities so there you go i hope that was an interesting tutorial that you'll give these effects a go yourself in your own renders and uh, that's the end of the video